Can you hear me? It's getting very close to lunchtime, so I don't think we've got time for a full kind of stand up and, and stretch. But if you want to do a seat stretch and wiggle right now, I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Come, do it. It'll make you feel more awake and comfortable. Arms in the air. One or two more. One or, one or two fingers. more seats at the front here, by the way. No? Okay. You're missing out on a big opportunity. Um, my name, thanks Mike, my name is Lisa Reichelt, I'm a user experience consultant and that means that I work with companies to help them define and understand their audiences so that they can then design the best possible experience for those audiences. When I explain what I do to startups, a lot of the time I think what they hear is blah, 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 expensive. Um, and, and you can do this work really expensively. I used to work for a large consultancy where we used to charge a lot of big companies lots of money to do this. I quit doing that sort of work and now the most, like most of the work that I do is with small businesses and startups because it's much more interesting and much more fun. And part of that has been me learning to do this in a much more agile and, and lean way. What I want to do today is kind of show you four things that you can actually do yourself to make your business more user-focused if that's what you'd like to do, which obviously I would recommend. Um, but what I do isn't rocket science. It's really a lot about kind of experience. Um, so I can give you some starting points here. You can go and start getting that experience for yourself. So there's kind of four simple steps that I want to go through. The first one is pick an audience. So I was at Seed Camp yesterday hearing lots of pitches and hearing lots of startups talking about their businesses there. And something that I, I, like, I, I always ask, you know, who's your audience? Who are you, who, are you sort of, who are you trying to get to sign up to your business? And lots of people tell me, you know, I, I don't want to really limit myself. I, you know, our, our audience is everyone. And that, frankly, is kind of complete crap. There's, there's no such thing as everyone. There's no such thing as a general public. Is, is anyone here the general public? Do you know any individual person who is the general public? It's just kind of complete construct. It doesn't exist. It, there, there's always a specific audience that you're interested in and, and you should define who that is and design particularly for those people and you're not restricting yourself by doing that. All you're doing is designing for the people who you really care about really well and the rest will follow on from that. Um, startups are kind of a little bit special sometimes in that there's often sort of two special cases that you don't see in other businesses. A lot of the time, your audience is actually you. You know, you're designing stuff that you want to use, and that's how your business came about in the first place. And that's completely fine. There are a lot of organisations out there, and probably one of the better, one, net, better known ones is 37 Signals, who explicitly say that we design stuff to work the way that we want to have it work. And you know, if you're different to us and you want different things, we're actually going to ignore you. That's completely fine acknowledge it and go with it. Same with potential investors. This is one that I come across all the time. New startups, very often, their target audience is actually potential investors. Great, excellent. That audience has got some really specific needs. It's often completely different to the needs of the first few people who are probably going to be either businesses or consumers signing up to use the service that you're offering. If you start to get those two things confused, you lose your vision, you, you, you start designing for, for nobody again, and that's what you always want to avoid. So if your target audience at the moment is investors, well, admit it, go with it, that's fine, acknowledge it, design really well for your investors, get the money that you need, and then refocus again and say, okay, now here, who is my audience? And go design for those people. Once you know your audience, Make sure that, that you actually really get to know them well. Um, don't assume that particular people do particular things and be really careful of stereotypes. If you've seen a lot of the products that get developed for older people and for women, you'll know that uh, there's a lot of design that's done just purely on stereotypes. There's some really dreadful things on the market that have been designed based on what people think these stereotypical users do that, that, that are complete rubbish. What you want to do is actually really engage with your end users. At the moment, there's lots and lots of different ways that you can do that. If you've got a company out you know, on the interweb, it's hard not to get feedback. You know, that, that it's brilliant. You should definitely be engaging with that. A lot of the time, the feedback that you're going to get in that format, though, is what people are doing. What's really useful for you in terms of, okay, what am I going to do about it, is to understand why they're doing what they're doing. And the absolute best way to do that is to watch somebody interacting with your application or your, your website or whatever it is that your service is. Uh, and, and you should 
absolutely be doing this yourself. It's really easy to do. Um, put the word out to people who are in your target audience. Ask them if they want to participate. You'll be amazed how many people are willing to spend their own time to sit down with you and help you improve your product. People really enjoy being involved in this process. Then what you want to do is um, watch them and, and mostly shut up. You should really try and restrict yourself to questions as much as possible. So you want to sit the person down in front of your application and start with some really broad questions. Ask them things like, what is this? Do you know what this is? Do you know who it's for? Do you know what we can do here? Do you know why you might want this? Those kind of questions, because it's amazing how often people can't actually answer those really fundamental questions. We get all head up about usability, but really basic stuff like that sometimes just goes completely under the mat. Um, yeah, so, so do, make, do make sure that you're getting out and doing this. It's really, it's a very easy thing to do. And once you do it, you'll end up with so much information that you'll hardly know what to do next. So let's, let's talk about that. Designing for your audience. What you want to do if you're going out and doing this research is making sure that it's actually being captured and used, otherwise it's kind of completely pointless. And something that I'd suggest that you consider doing is, is using these things called personas. I don't know if you've heard of personas before. Basically, they're just kind of imaginary people. You make up an imaginary person based on the research data that you've done. You give them a name, you give them a, a photo, you can kind of turn them into a little sort of paper pop-up people if you want to. And you then start to include those people in your process of deciding what, what your product's going to do and how it's going to work. What this does, it sounds a little bit kind of weird and strange, but what it does is that it's, when you're making decisions about things like design and also things like branding and marketing and which features should we do next, instead of asking that sort of broad and useless question of what do users do, what do users like, you can say, what does Keith, our persona, do? And what does Keith, our persona, like? And you'll get such a much more specific answer from that. You'll get so much more guidance from having that little pretend person there in the room, believe it or not, um, than you would without that, without, with just a more kind of abstract idea of what users like. 